Anchors up, sells at full. Welcome to the Sleepcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, you know what? I got. No, I was trying to think of something fun or clever or whatever to say. I couldn't think of something to say. Sometimes you start a sentence when you're podcasting as long as I have. Sometimes you just start a sentence, and you're just very confident that you're going to find something to say by the end of the sentence. And then sometimes you just don't. But hey, it's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. Hey, I heard that one. I yeah, I messed it up last time we recorded. I had turned the noise gate. It, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, Kyle, Ohio State defeats Michigan State in a pretty good game. Pretty good game for Ohio State. In a convincing way. Convincing way, yeah. Yeah, in, in, an, in an appropriate victory, I would say. Yeah, I mean, the... the uh, the betting odds was a 23 and a half, I think was the, was the line. It started the, at 25 and moved down to 23, e- I believe. Either way, even at 25, Ohio State still covered 38 to seven, but don't, don't let that fool you because there's a lot of people in that first quarter, that first quarter and a half that were really upset with this Buckeye team. So, well, Two, I mean, from a three, defensive three weeks, three weeks in a row, maybe where you can kind of see a trend now. Hopefully, this isn't the case. It just just two where, weeks, where but yeah. Ohio State is kind of, especially on the defensive side, has kind of just bend but don't break mentality. It kind of seems that way in that first half, but then really steps in, into gear in the in the second half. Cause you look, you look in the two, it is a tale of two halves from this defense. Yeah. Yeah. They, they let up uh, 186 yards in the first half and only 60 in the second half there. And only three of those 60 yards were on the ground. Yeah. It, the, Defense for the second week in a row. And of course, like last week, we kind of wrote it off. I At least I did. Like everyone was like, oh, they were better in the second half. And I was like, well, that's because Marshall lost their quarterback. They lost Stone. Um, so I kind of didn't even want to give them credit for that. But in this game, that's not what happened. Uh, Michigan State still had their full complement of, of players on the offensive side. And the Ohio State defense stepped it up against the same squad that they were struggling against in the first half. Now, the good news, bad news in regards to the defense is that, you know, bad news, they were letting up too many yards. Straight up, wide receivers were a little too open. Running backs were getting five yards a little too easily. You know, there are absolutely critiques for this defensive performance in the first half. But at the same time, they only allowed seven points. Those seven points were off of a stupid turnover. You know, you know the offense, the Michigan State offense operating on a very short field. And even though the defense let Michigan State get deep into territory on several occasions, they bowed up on fourth down in one occasion they forced several turnovers to get themselves out of those locations. So, you know, there are critiques, but, you know, and, and I think we're going to spend a lot of time this episode saying bad things about the defense. But one of the good things sure. that I, I think we have to also point out about this defense is they are more aggressively forcing turnovers this year than they have been in previous years. And we saw, you know, we saw that come up big a few times this game yeah but i mean it's as i mentioned it's kind of almost like a tale too as honestly it's a tale of um after the fourth drive because you look at um you look at the first four drives for for michigan state here um i mentioned that they had 186 oh i'm sorry that's that is in the first half. They had a hundred. I'm sorry, two hundred and forty six yards total for the game. Yeah, in their first four drives, that was one hundred and ninety yards. Yeah, so they they got fifty six yards 
for their next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drives. Yeah, more more on that when we get to the grades, which mm-hmm. it's time to get to the grades. Sure. Um, you want to start with the defense here? I know that. Ooh, you, you okay. Hey, let's start with let's, the offense let's, since we're since we're starting. Switch it since up. We're already talking about the defense. Let's 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 start with the defense here. Um, Esquire, yeah. uh, you're the only one in the uh, Patreon chat going. So if you 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 got the chat grades, if that's up to you right now, buddy. Yep. So game plan, game plan for this for this game here for Ohio State. Uh, yeah, you got to average it out from from those first four drives, which well, I, I don't think you do because I think the game plan is what you come into the game with, is it not? Yeah, I I, I guess so. Yeah, so I I would say like a honestly I would say like a C minus for me. I was not not thrilled of what we saw because we we were we were just saying how Ohio State should be able to take care of business, which ultimately they did, but. But their quarterback made it seem like he was like a Heisman contender. Like he was, he was like, I think he was like eight for eight for the first eight throws. Like he was just on target, had time, and, and, and the receivers were getting open. And for reference, he came into that game throwing, I think, 54%. It was something crazy, like 54%. So and that was inexcusable. 68- 68% for the game. Yeah, it was not yeah, not happy with how how the defense started off here, but afterwards after those four drives, yeah, it's they they did excellent here. So that goes into the, the, the game next, management. Next one here, the game management. Yeah, I got to give it like a an A. I would say an A. Um I I can understand I see Jared put A minus maybe maybe get that cleaned up after that second <laughs> that second drive there not, right. not after the fourth drive but because that honestly that easily could be a really close game where um, Ohio State's first four possessions were field goal touchdown interception touchdown Michigan State uh, had a turnover on downs had um, uh, a fumble on their second drive. They had the touchdown, which after they turned uh, that interception to a touchdown, the next play, and then a fumble again. Mm-hmm. All of those were inside Ohio State's red zone. Mm-hmm. So that could have easily been maybe an, an additional at max 21 points. So let's just say 14 to 17 points, maybe. Right. And we'd be sitting here at a totally different game where it's talking about Ohio State maybe winning 38 to, uh, I don't know, 20, 24, something like that. And we'd be like, right. okay, this is, this is a, this is a big, big issue for Ohio state here. This would be a totally different mindset now. But to, but like I was saying before <laughs> to Ohio state's credit, those turnovers weren't just Michigan state doing oopsies like Ohio state forced those turnovers that, that has to be said. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. There was like the the punch out by uh, by b- both by Hancock and by Ransom. Just just yeah. heads up, knowing knowing that just to make a play there. That was yeah, that the punch by Ransom especially was just was um, picture perfect, perfect te- technique to to get that in there. Yeah, but if they didn't or didn't recover them, yeah, I mean that's that's football, right? Yep. Uh, chat. What do you have for the defensive game management? That's the nervous part. I agree. Absolutely. They have C for game management. Okay. Well, I felt like we expressed pretty cleanly why that's harsh, but whatever. <laughs> the chat's allowed to have their own opinion. Uh, yep. the run stop. I run stop. I'd say like B plus. I mm. I know that at the at the start they didn't they did they didn't um they didn't do all that well but then after on after that those first three drives there they were spectacular they were spectacular after those three drives so I'd I'd say B plus in terms of run stop how much of that was Michigan State 
going down points and needing to stop running versus I listen this is supposed to be one of the best defensive lines in the country and I'm really sick of them getting pushed off the ball for f- 5 yards on a dive play quite frankly I mean honestly Jared it was it was 17 I mean not 17 it was 10-7 Ohio State at the at that point there and and then Ohio State scored that next touchdown and after that like Sparty Sparty couldn't do anything after Ohio State got that that next touchdown so it was it wasn't really Michigan State really trying to get out of their um get out of trying to to run the ball it definitely wasn't that case because if I'm looking at the if I'm looking at the stats here um pretty pretty close in terms of averaging rush rushes here or not averaging but number of rushes from first half to second half but the difference is that in the in the first half uh Michigan State uh rushed at 3.1 yards per carry and then in the second half 0.3 yards per carry so yeah i high great high high rating for the for the run stop yeah you can definitely um take points off because of those first few drives and what Jared said about about that they're getting easy three four yard chunks at a time there but they they, they made they made improvements as the game went along and that's better than not making improvements uh Buckeye Squire says Tyleek is more critical than uh I, than I said thought that, I, I think said that, uh-huh, I, I said that the last two weeks I, I, think I thought K- they missed really missed Williams I think McDonald should be higher in the defensive tackle rotation. I feel like some of the only disruptive defensive mm-hmm. tackle plays I'm seeing are from Hamilton and McDonald right now. Um, Hamilton's already high up in the rotation. I think McDonald needs to be higher up in the rotation. The whole team is like a constricting snake. It's going to kill you. Uh, it's just how many wounds you can inflict before it does. Sure, but I don't want to wait till the second half for the defense to start playing well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's George, I mean, it's definitely Georgia concerned. showed us why that's a mistake. Yeah. All right. Uh, pass rush. I, I got to give this one lower, lower grade here just because of expectations of what this defensive line should be able to do here so i'd say i'd say like a like a c i'd say a c i'm really disappointed as a as a whole from not getting the not getting the pass rush that we should be getting and and that's why michigan state had so much success in those first uh four drives is no no pressure at all yeah it's got it got better after after those first four drives but it's definitely a concern right now they should be dominating uh, all game long. Spike says we get home when it does matter. So there's that. Once again, I feel like there's a real big. Oh, we get home when it doesn't matter. So there's that. Yeah. I, I feel like there's, a, again, a big split between the first half and the second half. I feel like sometimes the defensive line doesn't start playing until the second half. And I have to imagine that's schematic, but I don't know. Anyway, I do a, I do a B minus for the pass rush. I did a C for the run stop in case I never said that out loud before. Um, pass coverage. Pass coverage. I say I'm like going, a C plus. I would say I, a C plus for me. I did a B minus. Um, again, like I think the defensive backs call me crazy. And I know that there'll be a lot of people saying, what about the wide receivers? When I say this, call me crazy. I think the defensive backs are the best unit on the team. I don't know why there are wide receivers running open. We should be holding them to a very high standard. And I don't think they performed to that high standard the past two weeks. Quite frankly, as I'm talking, I'm wondering, Hey, um, so then why a B minus? So I'm actually going to lower my score down to a C. Yeah, no, I I agree. I agree. I th- I think I think a C is is um is perfectly reasonable. Um, uh, the expectations of what this defensive back should be and what we've seen here, I think C C is definitely um uh, a definitely more a reasonable score to give them. 
too much too much there was too much uh, space given to them uh pre-snap so you see them yeah. like seven ten yards <clears throat> when it's like third and three third and five and they're like seven yards back and i'm like what what what, what are they calling and why why are they playing so far back it's definitely I, really confusing. Yeah. Tackling. I I didn't see any I didn't really see any issues tackling. Did you, Jared? Yeah. I I'd say I say like I'd say like an like a A minus. I, I thought overall there wasn't really, really I any did a B mis- plus. I there, there not really were. any not really many like um miss uh miss tackling here. I mean Aiden Aiden was very um mobile and made made guys miss um when trying to tackle and trying to tackle them behind the line of scrimmage there so other than that like they they tackled really well i think there were more t- miss tackles than you're remembering i did a b plus chat's doing b minus um but yeah third downs uh Kyle I actually have no idea what do the stats say about third downs yeah uh Sparty was two for nine. Ohio State was just under fifty percent, eight for eight for seventeen, but Ohio State was three for four on fourth downs. They did go, they did go on fourth down quite a bit in this game. Yeah, I did a B plus. Um, yeah, that's that's reasonable. I'm, I yeah. agree with that. I, I mean, like so many of the other things, and I don't want to beat a dead horse but like some of the other things it was like the first four drives versus the rest of the game in many ways mm-hmm. and on, honestly you can take that last fourth down out how say was three for three on fourth downs that last fourth down was the last drive of the game yeah for for Ohio state yeah spike says they were over 50 until the backups came in yeah okay all right cool um all right we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and take our first ad break here. Uh, we just went over the defense, so I think it's a good opportunity to do the first ad break. Uh, head on over to thesloopcast.com where you can find all of our lovely, lovely links, such as our Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. If you want to um, support the podcast, if you don't want to, if you don't want to do a um, become a patron, you can head on over to merch.thesloopcast.com or 7071.thesloopcast.com to purchase some merchandise to uh, directly assist Jared and I. Many other links in there, um, but the main one you need to worry about is thesloopcast.com for your landing page for all of those lovely, lovely links. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and take our first ad break and be right back. All right, Kyle. Nope. See, I always do that. I always go back to the standard podcast scene instead of back to the media mm-hmm. scene. Um, yep. Yeah, let's let's move on to the offense. Um, sure. What do you have for the game plan? Game plan? Well, I'd say an A. I I really liked what I saw from the. I liked what I saw from the play calling here. A little mix up of everything. Looking at the total here, forty. Passing plays, thirty-five rushing plays, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty standard, pretty average, uh, pretty balanced. That's the word I was looking for. Pretty yeah. balanced. Yeah. No, I mean, they were on their way to a touchdown before they had a uh, sort of a drive-killing penalty on a late hit that we never really saw a decent replay of to say if it was or wasn't. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was a good game plan all around. Um. Yeah, no, no complaints about the game plan. I have very little complaints about the offense in general. There, there is one aspect, but but we'll get we'll we'll get there though. Offensive uh, game, game manage- management. A, I I give an A as well. I they did they did really well and special on that special on that third down. Well, I guess we have third downs here too, but uh, on third and fourth downs, they, they they did really well. So yeah, a yeah. I mean, they, you know, I feel like I mean, ultimate game management moment for me was your quarterback goes down, Devin Brown steps in, 
delivers delivers a total strike for a touchdown. That to me is like the ultimate game management moment for me. You had your backup ready. You had a play ready. You didn't play it soft as far as like, oh, no, our quarterback's not in. Better do a run play. Um, when in doubt, throw it to Smith. That didn't hurt either. Um, yep. Yeah, no, I overall like the game management. Uh, I did an A plus yeah. for both of these last two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, passing. Passing, I would, I would say B, I would say okay. B for me. Uh, there was definitely some, some bad questionable passes. Questionable throws. Questionable throws, questionable decision making, especially that interception. No idea why Howard uh, threw it like that uh, <laughs> into double coverage there. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'd say, I, I would say B. I couldn't go any higher than a B. That's fair. Yeah, there were a couple questionable decisions by Howard. Um, Early could have been uh, have three thrown have thrown three picks. I don't mm. remember the third I what, one, but I'll trust. I know you. one. I know the one was like in the end zone that should have been. Uh, that should have. Yeah, been Yeah, he actually off. threw one. Yeah, the one in the end zone. I remember. I don't remember the third one, Esquire. But you're you're probably right. In all honesty, I my memory sucks. All right, uh, running, running here. I, I'd give a I'd give a B plus. Really, I give a B plus here. Um, I thought both no, Trey. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I'll, I'll do, no. I'll I'll do an A minus. I'll, I'll do an A minus. I. Really liked what I saw. Henderson had himself a really good game when he got the ball. I mean, he, he averaged almost, he was a yard shy of, of 10 yards a pop there. 9.9 yards a pop for him in, in this game and only seven attempts. Uh, Judkins didn't get his typical one large rush that he typically yeah. seems to have this year. So he was pretty well in checked here, but he was still, he was still pretty effective here. So I, I would I would say an A minus. Sure, and I and I think if we're talking about running, um, one of the wide receivers had a had a was it technically a run, or was yep, it technically it was, a yep. forward pass that was? Nope, I mean, was. we're we're not talking about running backs; these aren't position grades. We're talking yeah. about running. Howard also had a nice touchdown run. Um, so did so did uh, JJ. Yeah, yeah. That was that was thrown backwards to him when he was okay. doing a reverse. That was in the stats here. That was considered a rush. One rush for Smith for 19 yards and one touchdown. Okay. I couldn't remember in my head if it was like a four. I know it was like an end around, but sometimes they do that end around as like a little pop yeah. pass. So, so because because yeah. of that, because of that, that was, I believe that was his first 100 yard game. I don't think he's ever, maybe, 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 maybe I'm missing one of the weeks, but Chat, I know he was running. Re- I know that he really got close to 100 yards in like most of the games. I can't remember if he if he got over 100 yards at all. But in this game, he did he did get over 100 yards total. Excellent. Um, the red zone keep for Howard was filthy. It was they weren't ready for it. Um, Howard could have scored from 60 on that. Oh. It just happens to be on the three or whatever. Well, I mean, when you're that close in on the end zone. You know they don't keep safeties back, so who knows? Yeah, I oh, know he he Smith did have 119 against Western Michigan, so okay, missed that one. All right, um, so they got a there receiving, receiving. here. I'm I'm gonna say, and and a lot of and a lot of this is my my guy Abuka, love you love you guy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say receiving a a minus as well. I'm gonna say a minus. I I was about to say B plus there. Two drops that he, he that was all mental. That was all mental. wasn't wasn't any wasn't anything else. He shouldn't have had those two. He should have had nine catches for over a hundred yards here. Yeah. Um. Again, this is receiving, so it's it's any and all pass catchers. Uh. So we also have to include um. What was our biggest tight end day of the year so four far? Catches. With G. Scott getting four catches, including a touchdown. 
um, was very involved in the game plan, the, you know, start of the yeah, game three, game plan. Yeah, three catches for Scott, that touchdown, and a Christian also had a catch as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I thought it was a good receiving day. You make a good point about some unnecessary drops. Um, I should probably take the plus off. You're probably correct about that. But Amuka, uh, uh, Amuka, Ameka, Ooh. Mecca Buka. I guess we're going to call him Amuka now. Amuka Buka. Um, I, yeah, he had a couple. Yeah, there were a couple drops, but like he also had an, an incredible day. Um, it, just in general, I, I thought that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just. I think an A. I think still just a solid A is pretty good. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like A minus might be a tad bit harsh. Um, but yeah, so somebody, somebody, agrees somebody, with somebody you who's had, A minus. Somebody who's had just a really quiet year, but very, very, very successful so far. Yeah. Carno, Carno Tate. Yeah. Carno he has. Tate has had himself a really solid, solid year so far. 100%. Uh, He's kind of lost in the shuffle a bit between the other two guys as far as notoriety or publicity is concerned, but he's having a really good year. He is. Yeah. And and glad to see that. Glad to see uh, Bryson Rogers getting some, getting some play, getting some play in here. Got a pair of catches as well. Always like seeing those uh, young bucks coming in to, to get some catches as well. Uh, Ennis had a, a late game catch as well. Not just the mm-hmm. punt returner, Brian Ennis. Yeah. All right, run blocking. Uh, run blocking. I. I give an A. I would. I would give like an A A minus for for run blocking here. So I'll I'll stick with it. Just in my my first gut instinct, an A. I'm actually. They pay, they pay, pay pave the they pave the way for these running blocks. Pave the way for Howard for Smith on the on their runs as well too. We're really really. Uh, impressed what I've seen, especially with some of the games that we've seen earlier this year against lesser competition, seeing them dominate that the, the way that they should against Michigan State on the road at night. Yeah, really, really impressed. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to go full A plus on this. And I'm going to say that because I thought the wide receivers had an excellent blocking day. Mm. Um, yes, absolutely. And Emeka Abuka basically was a pulling tight end on one play and lit someone up, lit up one of Michigan state's linebackers. Um, Mecca Buka had a fantastic game. Um, he was a fantastic blocker, fantastic receiver. Um, and to uh, spikes points out Trey. Um, I thought the running backs as we get into, in, uh, Esquire, do you have a grade for run blocking? Um, excuse me, not Esquire, Spikes. Spikes or Esquire, I guess. Um, Mech also had a two-for-one block. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, but pass blocking. I thought the offensive line did good. Not perfect. But I think that like the running backs picked up some big blitzes and in, you know, fierce ways. I thought the running backs were doing a good job on blitz pickup. Um, I think on, on one, I think on Howard's interception that he did throw, he kind of panicked through it because he saw a blitz coming, but, and I don't remember which running back it was. I think it was Judkins, but I could be mistaken. He came over and, lit up the blitzer like Howard did not have to get rid of it so quickly. Uh, But for the most part, I thought the pass blocking had a good day, Um, especially with the running back assistance. What say you, Kyle? What say you chat? Yeah. Pass blocking. Yeah. I was really, really, um, excuse me. Really happy to, to see that as well. A a zero sacks allowed here. Uh, as a game as a whole, Michigan State only had three tackle for losses. Uh, Michigan uh, Michigan State defense that is. Uh, so, yeah, overall run blocking, pass blocking, solid A here. I'm very, very happy with with how the offensive line did. 
Uh, and we have third downs. Uh, as we pointed out earlier, Ohio State was over 50% when the starters were still in. I think they did a good job, especially early, especially like in the second quarter, uh, to even avoid um, needing to do third downs. Yeah, um, I kind of want to kind of in, in this game here. Three for like three third, on fourth downs. Yeah, third slash fourth downs. Right. In, in this game particular. Yeah, I would say like a, I would say like an A. As well, they you're you're never going to get near 100 percent on third downs here. So, 50 percent, and even even if you take in consideration those uh those three for three on on fourth downs there. So what is that? 11. Let, let's just say 11 for 17 on third slash fourth downs. Sure. Yeah, that that that's outstanding. All right. Um. Real quick, special teams. Sure. Actually, do you do you want to do the ad break first? No, let, let's let's just do the special teams real quick. All right, let's do the special teams first. Um, kicking a eh? kicking no out yeah no out of bounds this time zero no, out of listen, bounds a hundred percent on field goals a hundred percent on extra points a hundred percent on touchbacks. Yeah, is that correct? One hundred percent on touchbacks. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up pull that stat up real quick. So if I go to the I don't I don't are you gonna team, find is he gonna find zero. that's that? Yep, I did. Yeah. Oh, zero the kick off returns, returns by the other zero team, kick course. returns, zero punt returns. For of course, of course, of course. I'll take that. I'll take that every day. Punting. How many? We had one punt in competition i think there was a second punt later in the game is that correct uh so if i look here there was Ohio State's first punt was in the towards the end of the first half Mm -hmm. and then punts two and three were in the fourth quarter okay there were two in junk time uh so one one punt and and it was a good punt a minus whatever Uh, I'm pulling that. It wasn't a long up. punt. I don't I think, but one, it one. It, yep. 42 yards, 42 it, yards, which is probably about, probably about where you're looking at. You, well, get, you want to get close to that 45. But, but it was inside. Yeah. It, but it, it was, was inside the 10 even, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. I, Spike I says, yes, look. we're going to believe I, I, him. I believe so. We we'll just believe spikes. Spike said, yes, let's just believe him. Um. So yeah, good, good punting day. Not, not a, productive punting day but a good punting day what would you say the grade is kyle for punting hey yeah sure chat hey sure why not returning uh nothing bad happened in returning so that's good no no hey, drops hey, no hey, muffs hey minus hey, hey minus, minus. Nothing bad happened. That's that's the name of the game most of the time. Nothing particularly good happened either, but you know, two returns for nineteen Man, yards. Man, chat's on, harsh. On returns. I got an A, two. a D, a B, and a C. Wow! I think anybody want to put in an anybody want to put an F in there? Jeez, we got all the letters. <laughs> actually, I think Esquire was in response to the previous question in in regards to the punts. So it's actually probably a D, a B, and a C. I'll just put B. <laughs> Kyle, they, they want right. that punt return for you more than you want that punt return for you. At this point, I just know it's not going to happen here. <laughs> like it's, it is, it is so tough in today's age, especially with these punt formations. It makes it so hard for these teams to get a, a punt return touchdown. So. All right, Kyle. Ad break. Do a quick one for me. Do a quick one. All right. Do all the things and we'll be right back. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, the soup, the soupcast.com. Find all, find all the lovely links there. Patreon, discord, YouTube page, merch store, uh, Spotify, a lot, lot of different links in there. Uh, again, our splash page, the soupcast.com. We can find all those links and to become a patron over, over at Patreon. The, sloopcast.com to avoid these ad breaks. So we're going to take our second break and be right back. Let's 
let chip scheme up a weird reverse or fake reverse return. Listen, I think chip's busy. Let, let chip focus on the offense. It'll, and everything will be fine. I promise. And I, and I went back to the wrong screen again. All right, Kyle, overall team rankings. Yes, sir. Well, let's start with the effort. Sure. I felt like the offensive effort was on point. I felt like the defensive effort showed up late, but got there eventually. Yeah. Um, I, I would say B plus that yeah. the defense, the defense, defense uh, really brought that down. Uh, I almost said a B, but I mean, the offensive effort was so, so outstanding that it, it definitely has to put that grade and, up higher. And to your point, it was really just the first four drives for Michigan state. Mm -hmm. which again is about two more drives than I'm willing to let another team have. Yeah. But you know, it's not like the defense slept walk through the entire game. So, you know, just trying to grade on a bit of an average. Yeah. But it definitely drug down what could have been a A's across the board game. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Discipline. Uh, I feel like there were a lot of mental mistakes. There were. Um, there were. Some dumb penalties, some drop passes, um, a 15-yard penalty that stalled out the first drive that should have been a touchdown. Nobody got tossed in one. That's that's true. No, No one got tossed this game. And it was a scrappy game. Like there was a lot of jawing, a lot of very chippy behavior for sure. I think that drives the discipline down a bit. Like, yeah, I w yeah, I think B minus B minus is uh, B minus sounds sounds right there. Honestly, I would say only had four penalties all yeah, game. I know, uh, but they did have the the interception that immediately turned into a Michigan State's only touchdown. And Ohio State did lose two other fumbles, uh, but they did recover those as well. So yeah. it could have been could have potentially been more. Could have potentially been more interceptions as well. Uh yeah, I think I think um scrappy and sloppy are I think two two ways to describe uh this team here in this game. So yeah, B minus. Uh Chat, do you have a grade on discipline? And Kyle, do you have a grade on execution? Again, I just... I, I would say I, B. I, I, yeah, okay, B. I would say B on execution. Again, That that's just been driven down so much with the execution from the defense um, in that first quarter and a half there, almost two quarters. I mean, if it wasn't for that and... Defense played a lot better. It easily could have been a solid A, but B, I think B is fine. Well, I mean, with the execution to me, like it's letting wide receivers run open, but it's also Howard throwing a really stupid interception and drop passes. And I think there were just some execution things that they can be cleaned up and yeah. need to be cleaned up. If you want to beat Alabama or Texas, maybe Georgia, we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, if, if you want to beat those teams, you're going to need to shore those things up. Mm -hmm. Overall grade, Kyle, what's your overall grade for the game? I think, wait, I think uh, overall, real quick, I'm going to read the I'm going to read Esquire's comment here. I think the linebackers were executing badly and the secondary was being put in uh, conservative positions that weren't doing them a lot of favors. Um, I think there's something to be said about that. Yeah, I would. I am not going to disagree with that statement. Um, understand that when we're talking about the pass coverage, we're not just talking about the defensive backs. We're also talking about the linebackers in pass coverage. Same thing with pass rush. You know, you're either getting pressure on the quarterback or you're not. I don't necessarily care where it's coming from. And the same thing with the linebackers in the, in the secondary. Uh, Sonny was being targeted in coverage for sure. I think, uh, I'd have yeah. to, I'd have to watch, he, but I, I, I saw a couple plays specifically in pass coverage where I thought he was out of position, which 
he might just not be fully comfortable in the linebacking spot yet. And as far as the linebackers yeah. are concerned, I think it's notable that they started three. They and did. Reese yep. got the start and not Hicks. Yeah, so your starting three were Styles, Simon, and Reese. Yeah. Were, were, were those three there. And looking off of the defensive gradings here, yeah, Styles with a 58 out of 100 grade for, for this game here. Is that uh, PFP? Yeah. Or PFF? Si- si- Simon, Simon ended up with a 68 and Reese had a 75, which put him the fourth best defensive player. But you look at all the coverage here. Yeah. Sony Styles had a 45 for, for pass coverage there. Not, not which is good. weird. Cause he's a safety. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But he just might not be super comfortable at linebacker yet. So maybe, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give that a shot. You want to guess who the worst the worst one was for for Ohio State for all twenty seven players that played? Oh, okay. Who who, who performed who performed the worst? Wow, we're really just going to put someone on blast, huh? I am because we we deemed him. I'll just I'll just say it right here, like we deemed this this position the best, the best at in best position at Ohio State here, and by far the the worst. Just tell performed. me. Igben Nosen. Iggy. Yeah. I would say he had a rough game yesterday as well. Yeah. He did not have that great of a game. All right. Overall team grade. Overall, I said B plus. I think yeah, B plus. I did is A minus. Re- That's roughly the same. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. If you want to keep talking, oh, no, no, you're good. You're good here. I was just, I was just reading what, what chat was, was saying here. I, I think B plus is reasonable. I mean, let, let's just take a step back and look. Ohio State won by 31 points on the, on their first road game against Michigan state. I know Michigan state isn't the, the toughest opponent, but your first road game at night and you win by 31 points. That's, a, that's very solid. That, that is very sure. solid. I know we're going really into really deep into the weeds here, looking at picking specific things out uh, with the team here. But in the end, Ohio State, Ohio State won thirty-eight to seven. Uh, held Michigan State to under two hundred and fifty yards of total offense, four under fifty rushing. That's good. That, that, that's that is really good. Uh, I think MSU is going to be pretty tough next year. I think that Michigan State's going to keep. I think they're on a very good trajectory. I think they'll actually be a even better team, like in November. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I think that uh, Jonathan Smith is doing really good things at at East at East, at East Lansing right now. Um, well, this is going. To be- going to be really interesting seeing and they are quite frankly already out i mean we talked about this during know your enemy so i'm not just saying this because ohio state just played them we talked about this during the know your enemy episode they are already overperforming my expectations for them this year yeah i mean this start off Childs they, is good he's raw but he's good i i agree esquire he was like ranked fifth in in uh mobile quarterbacks and dual and dual threat quarterbacks. That's that's the term. Yeah, uh, dual threat quarterbacks in the country when Michigan State brought them over. Yeah, I mean, when when Michigan State first for after week one they beat Is FAU. That portal six, rankings when Michigan State got them, or was that his sixteen to ten? Or was, was that, that? I'm sorry, you you said he was the fifth dual threat quarterback when Michigan State got him, or when Oregon um, State got no, him? No, so. Um, because he originally committed. I'm, I'm to sorry. Oregon. It was seven. He he was the seventh. He was the seventh quarterback, uh, in the twenty four seven, but, uh, he was the second, rate second best quarterback in the tra- in the transfer portal. Okay. The Marsh kid is good too. The Marsh is excellent. He yeah. As as I was saying, like Michigan Michigan State started off sixteen to ten over FAU, and we're like, oh great, this is not a good look for. 
Michigan State, and they beat Maryland at Maryland and did bit took care of business against uh, Prairie View. Barely lost to uh, Boston College, but we're I'm, I'm curious to see how how they're going to do against Oregon. I, th- I think this is going to tell us a lot about who Michigan State is and and more so who Oregon really is too. Yeah, I think it'll be an excellent comparison for sure. Chat, do you have a overall game ranking before we move on? A A minus. I'll go. Uh, I don't know. I'll just uh, spice answered first. I'll go A. Um. All right, that's it for the report card. Uh, anything in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag you want to touch on, Kyle? Yeah. So, uh, two questions. Uh, what are your concerns with the defense in the upcoming matchups with Iowa, Oregon, and primarily Oregon? Um, I I think that they're going to need to. I don't, you you got these really good safeties on this team. I think you need to maybe trust your cornerbacks to play a little bit more press and let the, let the safeties play over top to prevent the big plays. I I that that's just my take on it and I don't know if they're just trying to throw other stuff on film or or what the case is right now but I don't think that playing super off fits the skill set for either Burke or Iggy. So I'm I'm curious if Ohio State's just trying th- trying to throw some other stuff on film or what the situation is. Um, mm. As far as concerns with the defense, I with Iowa none. <laughs> it's it's Iowa. Um, Oregon, yeah, there are concerns there. Uh, any other questions right. you want to cover um, in this episode? With Alabama's upcoming schedule versus Ohio State's upcoming schedule, is there a chance Ohio State can move to number one with dominating victories against Iowa and Oregon? Mm, not, I mean, Iowa's not ranked. Oregon is highly ranked, but not highly as ranked as Georgia. Um, and and ultimately, I don't care. Like whatever, let. I mean, maybe so. After those two games, no. You throw a Penn State on top of that. Um, of course, I'm not really sure what I don't know. Georgia's schedule is off the top of my head as far as who they're playing when. Um, but I don't think decisive victories against Oregon, unless it's like a total embarrassment of Oregon. If it's a 59 to nothing Wisconsin style thrashing of Oregon, then we can maybe talk. But I don't think even like a 10 17 point victory over Oregon is going to catapult you over Bama at this point. If, if Alabama's going to go undefeated and Ohio state goes undefeated, like Alabama's going to get the number one just based on their schedule and who, and who they played. Like there's, there's no debate. I don't listen. I guess a lot of look at, (laughs) look at where Penn state's currently ranked. Look at where okay. Michigan's currently ranked, and I don't think Michigan will still be there when we get there. Granted, okay. well, let's okay. So currently, if we're lo- looking at currently right now, like Alabama just beat Georgia. Sure, they play they play Tennessee, who's top five yeah. right now. They play Missouri, top ten. They sure. play L- LSU, top fifteen, and they play they, Oklahoma, yeah. and they play they play Oklahoma as a top twenty five. Much like Michigan, LSU and Oklahoma aren't going to be that highly ranked by the time Alabama gets there. That those are those are paper okay. champions. Well, I'll, I'll still stick by my statement. Yeah. If, if if both teams think, go undefeated, like Alabama would get the nod at number one. I think how Which I think how you win. No, honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Like it if you're matter. for one and two, it does not matter. No, it does not matter. Uh. That being said, I, Bama, I mean, if we're talking about play, Bama would have to beat Texas, too. Assuming Texas 
makes it to the SEC championship game in yep. this scenario. There's, so it would not surprise it would not surprise me in the end here. There's only one undefeated team, if that, by the end of the by the end out of, of the, the power, uh, out, out of uh, yeah by the, by the power five or not, power four. No, out of the power two. I think it's plausible that you might see Miami do it, and you might see someone out of the Big Twelve, maybe BYU do. I I don't know. Like, well, not not BYU, but I'm just saying. Like, but out of out of the Big Ten and the SEC which are the ones that matter at this point. Yeah. I think you probably only see maybe one, maybe one undefeated team. All right. I think that's That's it it. for today's episode. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner, Kyle? Um, Ohio state as a 24 early, early 24 point favorite over Iowa. So pretty much, pretty much the same against Michigan State. I'm predicting a shutout. I'm calling it right now. I think Day and company give zero fucks where they're ranked at this point. I agree. I mean, it, I don't know. It's just I think it's a habit that we, and when I say we, I mean just college football fans, but also we, as in this podcast, need to just get out of the habit of caring so much about it. it doesn't matter like it used to and that's a good thing mm-hmm. it's a good thing that it doesn't matter like it used to all right that's it that's it for today's episode tonight's ending music um, bro- oh sorry oh uh, actually actually no oh, we'll save it for later this this week oh, that's fine are, are you saving it for the tuesday episode always be um, teasing kyle always be no, plugging uh, always more, be teasing more, more for thursday and friday's episode Ooh. That's a long, that's a long-term tease. All right. That's it. That's it for today's episode. Uh, Tonight's ending music, uh, a band out of Cincinnati, Cincinnati or Dayton. I forget which, Uh, the dopamines, one of my favorite punk bands from the great state of Ohio. Uh, The name of this song is for heaven's sake, part two. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music. And of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, these are the dopamines.